Hi there, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be making a Fiona handbag. You can find the pattern and any supplies you need on my website. Uh, this bag has a big open pocket on the outside. It has a recessed zippered closure. My sample here does not have one, but the pattern does, and I'll be going over that today as well. On the back, there is a zippered pocket. Nice and big, put your cell phone or any of your other things that you need uh, easy access to. It has some short handles that you can grab when you just wanna carry it by hand or if you want to wear it over your shoulder or crossbody. It has a great long adjustable strap. So I'm gonna show you how to add on a slide, how to do your tab, and how to do all the rest of that. And this bag can be made out of fabric, out of canvas, out of um, cork like I have here. I'm gonna be making today's sample also all out of cork on the outside with cotton on the inside. You can mix and match and the pattern is going to give you some different options. As far as the handles and this top accent are concerned, anything you see here in the light pink, the rose gold cork, that's going to have to be out of a non-fraying material because the handles, the accent, and these handles up here, they don't have uh, finished edges. They have a raw edge and cork does not fray. So as long as you have a non-fraying material for those parts, this accent right here, the front and back, all of that can also be made out of cotton. So let's go ahead and go over our fabrics and get started. If you open up your pattern to page one, I'm gonna go through all of the pieces right now. I've already got mine cut and any interfacing that I needed fused so that I am ready to go and I can jump right on to step one. So for my outside, I need my A pieces and I also need my B pieces. So for A, I have chosen the black polka dots. That's going to be the main print. It's going to be the outside of the front pocket, which is essentially the front of the bag. It's also gonna be the back. Behind those pockets for my accent color will be this lemon yellow cork. And because I'm using uh, the cork for the accent, I also have a piece of fabric. When this pocket is made, I want to make sure that it's not gonna be too thick for my domestic machine. So I will be using a piece of this for the front of the pocket, as well as the fabric on the back. You can do this all out of cotton, but if you're using cork or vinyl or anything that's a little bit heavier, you wanna use cotton for the back. This B piece is not interfaced and you'll find all that information in the pattern. So that's the outside of my bag. I also have from a black cork, I'm just using a solid black, my handles and my accent. So my C pieces here are just going to be for the top of the bag. I have two long D pieces. These are gonna make my long adjustable handle and I'll show you some tricks on uh, getting a nice flat seam. I also have my E piece. This is for the front accent. So this is going to go upright. So just know that if you're using a directional cork, you're either going to need an extra piece or your direction will go the opposite way. So let's say that this had stripes on it and the stripes went this way on the top of my bag, they would go this way on the front. So just be prepared for that. It's not the best place to have a directional print and you can always skip this. It's just an accent. My F piece here is gonna be for my short handles. I do have two short handles, but I sew that all as one and then trim it down afterwards. I have my lining pieces, which are G. Since I'm using Quilters Cotton, I do have interfacing on those. If I was using a waterproof canvas or um, something a little bit heavier, I might skip the interfacing. I've gone ahead and added decor bond to both of these. I also have here my H, which are my divided pockets. And this is just a little trick that I do. It's just something that I've done forever. I take those pieces and I fold them in half and I pin them. This just tells me what piece they are. So if I don't look at my pattern and see that H is the pockets, I know that those are divided pockets. So I'm ready to sew them when that time comes. Just a little something I do. I have I, which is my outside zippered pocket. So the zippered pocket is going to be on one of the black polka dot pieces, but this is going to be inside. And because I have a directional print, I'll show you a trick for how to um, add that when we get to that step. And last but not least, I have my strips of J. This is also out of Quilters Cotton, and this is for the recessed zippered closure. You'll notice that my pieces actually go sideways, so I have a directional print, and these pieces go this way, so my zippered pocket, or excuse me, my recessed zipper would go like this. It doesn't make a big difference to me. If it does to you, you can cut them so that the flowers go upright. Again, not one of those things that makes a huge difference to me. So, so let's go ahead and look at the rest of the supplies that we need for our bag and any of the other things that you might need for making this. I have my two zippers. I have a 10 inch and a 14 inch. 
These are the zippers by the yard. They are nylon, so I can sew over them. It's gonna be very important for both the outside pocket as well as the recessed zipper. A metal zipper is not always the easiest to work with, especially if you're a beginner. So because I can cut and sew over these, they're perfect. I also have my hardware. I've chosen to go with the rainbow finish, so I have my slide set right here. That's going to be for my adjustable handle. I am gonna add a handmade tag. It's totally optional, but it's up to you if you wanna do that, and I'll show you a great place to add that. I have my thread. I've decided to use a um, ver rainbow variegated thread. This is an Aurifil 40 weight cotton. I like to use that for piecing as well as top stitching. And because I have a black and white with a little bit of colored theme, I thought that might be a fun addition to that. I've gone ahead and cut out my templates at the back of my pattern. There is a little one inch square. You'll want to make sure that you um, test that to make sure that your templates are the correct size. Otherwise, uh, your pieces will be off a little bit. So I just cut them out of paper. You can use cardstock or template plastic, whatever you would like. As far as additional supplies that you might need on top of your sewing machine with your quarter inch and eighth inch foot and your zipper foot, I also have my four in one tool. This has a seam ripper and it also has a turning tool. That's gonna be great when I make my outside pocket to keep everything smooth. I have some marking tools. I have a regular pen that I use on anything that's not gonna be seen. And I have a chalk pencil with the black cork having a black backing. The chalk pencil works really nicely. I have clips, of course. I also have some pins in case I need those. And I have two different kinds of tape for today. This right here is quarter inch wide fusible tape. That's what I'm going to use for my recessed zippered closure. I do have a full video on that available separately, but today I will also go over it with you as the pattern states. So I use that for my recessed zipper. And I've grabbed some of this non-fusible tape only because I'm using cork on the outside and the zippered pocket can be a little bit difficult to press flat. You can put your iron on cork. I do it all the time. Um, it's not an issue but sometimes because it's a little bit thicker, it kind of wants to fight you and it doesn't want to be as flat. So this is going to help when I can't fuse it and I can't get my iron in place and you know get that heat through the cork. This is going to help me with my zipper. So other than that, I just have um, all of my, I have my machine set up. I've got all my supplies here and I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna jump right into step one and get started. Step one is fusing, and I've already gone ahead and done my fusing, but let's just go over that um, in case you're using cotton fabrics. Because I have cork, I had minimal fusing to do. So these are my A pieces, these are for the outside. Because I am using cork, these do not have any interfacing, they don't need it. If your pieces are out of canvas or cotton, these A pieces are going to get interfaced. For B, again, because I am using cork, I have one B out of cork and I have one B out of fabric. This is the back of the pocket, so it's actually the part that you really don't see on the outside until you look into the pocket. This, regardless of what I'm using on, the, um, on this part, is always going to be not interfaced. So this is a piece of cotton, no interfacing. This piece, if it was cotton or canvas, this would require interfacing as well. And then also your lining pieces, these are your G pieces. Both of these are going to get interfacing unless you're using a waterproof canvas or something heavier on the lining. These are always going to get some interfacing as well. So now that I've completed step one, which is fusing, I'm going to go on to steps two and three and do all of my trimming. Let's go over some of these pieces to make sure that you don't have any confusion. In step one, it is going to tell you to label each of your pieces, especially your A's and your B's. And let me show you here on these pieces before I show you my trimmed ones, what those are. So this right here, the floral piece is an A, as well as this floral piece. So the main part of my bag is out of flowers. Those are my A's. So I marked this A on the backside pocket front, and I marked this A bag back. Okay, so this is the back of the bag, this is the pocket front, but the pocket front is actually what I see on the front of my bag. For my bees, I have one out of cork and I have one out of fabric. I marked this piece, this gray cork, as bag front because it's the front of the bag. And my fabric piece, because I have cork, that was a kind of an easy one, the fabric here is pocket back. So it's the back side of the pocket. Make sure that you label those really well. That way you don't have any problems with the next step. So let me grab my pieces. I've already gone ahead and trimmed them. So let's go over how those look. 
So first I have my lining pieces. I'm gonna start with the inside just cause it's a little bit easier. I have my two lining pieces. These are the G's. They're cotton, they have their interfacing from step one. I've done my edges here, which means I have trimmed them in so they have a slight diagonal to them. Makes the bag more narrow at the top and wider at the bottom. I also used my template three and I trimmed the corners to make them curved and I gave them these little triangular cutouts. Those are for the, um, the darts later. That's how the bag gets some depth. So while we're here, let's just take a look because I have a directional print. Whenever you look at my patterns, any of the patterns, including this one, when you're cutting your pieces, I always give you your width, which is how wide your piece is, and your height, which is how tall it is. Since I'm using a directional fabric, I made sure that my tall, my height right here is the way that the direction goes. It is calculated into the yardage for you. And I made sure that my width is this way. If I didn't pay attention to that and I cut it the wrong way, my flowers would be going sideways. So if you have a directional print, always make sure you know which is your height and which is your width. Also, because I have a directional print and the bottom is the rounded corners, the top is the narrow edge, I made sure to keep these in the correct position before cutting because I wouldn't wanna have one going the wrong way because I didn't pay attention or just cut them incorrectly. So I always make sure that they are standing upright so my top narrow edge is up here, my bottom rounded edge is down here. So these are my two G pieces. These were trimmed with template three and also trimmed on my mat. You can find all of the measurements on step two. Also on step two, is going to be trimming the outside parts of the bag, which for me is cork. So I have here the same shape. This is one of my A pieces, this is for the back. I've already gone ahead and labeled bag back A. And this is for the front of the bag, which goes behind the, the pocket, which is bag front B. These were trimmed the exact same way as the lining piece. And here's a trick for you that I like to do with any bag that has um, a shape to it and requires templates or trimming. I do one of my pieces. I take my time, I get all of my measurements correctly, I make sure the piece is exactly the way that I want it, I trim my corners, and then I take this piece and I use this as my template to do the rest of them. I find that I have a lot less error, it goes a little bit quicker, and everything matches up nicely. If I've made any small errors and maybe these diagonals are not quite the same, at least they're the same on each piece, which means my bag will go together better. So this again, is my bag front B. This is my bag back A. That's all I have to do to these pieces, trim the diagonals and trim the corners. Now for the pocket itself, we're gonna add another step to that. So you're gonna do the same trimming, but then you're also going to grab template one and you're going to do this scoop right here. That is what creates the pocket so that when this piece is added on, it will look like that. So my yellow will show through and my black polka dots, which are right side down right now, will show out in the front. So here's a great trick for this as well. And this is also included in the pattern. Because I have cork, I didn't use pins, I use clips. And I clipped my pieces together before I took my template and put my template on here. There's a center mark on the template. There's also measurements for your sides. So I place that on here. You can trace it and cut it with scissors or you can cut it with your rotary cutter, whatever is easier for you. But by putting these two pieces right sides together, because this has no interfacing, it wants to shift when you're cutting, which can kind of make you crazy or sometimes your cutting just doesn't look great. If I do this, put my cork or my interfaced fabric piece on the top since it has more stability, then I can do my trimming and everything comes out a lot neater. Plus, because it's all clipped or pinned together, it's ready for step four. I can take this right to the machine and do step four. Another little trick for you, if you are doing this scoop and you want to use your rotary cutter, what I find is easier is instead of taking my rotary cutter and doing this and moving the cutter, I actually find it easier to move the fabric. So I put my rotary cutter down and I shift the fabric like this. I find that I get a much cleaner curve and I it comes out a lot neater that way. If that makes you nervous and you don't wanna use your rotary cutter, that's fine. You can mark this and cut it with scissors. But just remember, this is just a scoop on the front. So if your scoop and mine are a little bit off from each other, it's not gonna matter. No one's gonna know. So if you miscut and yours is a little bit deeper or even a little bit more shallow, it's totally fine. So now that these pieces are clipped together, I'm gonna to take this over to the machine and I'm going to complete step four. 
And step four is just going to have me stitch this top edge right here, this scoop with a quarter of an inch seam. I just need to make a nice, neat um, finished edge for my pocket. The rest of these edges are going to go in seams later. They don't need to be finished. I took my pieces to the sewing machine and I just stitched this top curved area right here. I used a quarter of an inch seam and I made sure to back stitch when I started and stopped. I did not do my top stitching yet because I'm going to add my accent piece before I do that. Here's some pressing tips for you. What I do when I am pressing this area is I just go a little bit at a time and then use my pressing clapper. So I do a couple of inches with the nose of my iron, use my clapper. A couple of inches, use my clapper. If you have a material on the front such as vinyl or a heavy metallic cork, or you're not comfortable using your iron on the cork, you can finger press and just use clips. I have my clips on here while my pieces are cooling. So if you wanna do that instead, that's totally fine. And then what you can do is turn this over to the back and use your iron to go around here as well and then smooth everything else out. I don't worry about this bottom part of the bag. Um, I worry about the top part right here because that's where it's gonna to be top stitched. So once I have that ready to go, I'm gonna grab my E piece. This, again, I already trimmed with my template and I've gone ahead and added a couple of marks, very small, right at the top and the bottom. Those are not gonna be seen, they're just for me to be able to line this up. And I would suggest that you mark the bottom of your bag front and the top as well. I have a pin here um, just sticking in the fabric so I can see where it is. Because what can happen, if I take my center marks right here, sometimes this can shift to the side, <clears throat> excuse me, and you won't even notice it. And then when you're done sewing, your piece is off a little bit. It looks fine on here, but when you get it on your bag, that's when you notice, and usually at that point, it's too late. So what I like to do is just grab a couple of clips here. I line up the bottom center marks and clip that in place. I'm clipping through both pieces of cork and the backing fabric. And then what I'm going to do, and you can see it's already shifted a little bit, is line up that center mark right here with my pin. I can take my pin out and I'm going to tuck this back and then I'm gonna add a couple of clips. And by doing that, this little raw edge that's down here in the bottom, that will get sewn into a seam. But this one up here, if I try to trim this and make it the same curve as the top, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So what I found while I was making the pattern was that it was easier to just do it this way. By folding this back piece over, my top stitching will go through it, securing it in place. I can trim it down a little bit when I'm done, but when the bag is finished, you won't even notice. Here's my finished bag. So you can see it again. So my top stitching went right through those layers. And back here, my little piece of cork is uh, secured down and nobody can see that and it's totally fine. So what I'm gonna do is take this to my sewing machine. I'm going to stitch the sides here. I can do the bottom at an eighth of an inch, but it's not necessary. I just wanna do the sides. And then I wanna do the entire top curved part right here. You can do a quarter, an eighth, or both. I'm probably gonna do both. I love double top stitching. So I'll do that on the sides first, then I'll do the curve right here, and then I'll come back. I took this over to my sewing machine. I sewed my edges of my accent right here. I did an eighth and a quarter, and I also did the top edge right here, an eighth and a quarter. Again, it's totally up to you. You can do whichever you would like, one or the other or both. I like to do both, and I used a variegated thread. Uh, my apologies if you hear anything in the background. Uh, my husband is here working, so you might hear his um, tools. I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but I am so sorry if it is. Uh, so anyway, my front for right now is done. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside, and I'm going to start working on step five, which is to make my handles. So I have right here my two D strips, and I also have my F strip. So I have both of these ready to go. The first thing that I'm going to do with my D strip is I'm going to sew these ends together right here to make one nice long strip. This is for the adjustable handle, so I wanna have one long strip. I piece together cork all the time, and in the pattern I have showed you one technique for pressing your seam open. Today I'm actually gonna show you a second technique that I've been using lately and really liking. So I'm gonna take this to my machine and I'm just gonna sew across here a quarter of an inch and then before I do anything, I'm gonna bring it back here and show you how I actually like to split my seam. I find it stronger and it lays really flat. So I'll be right back. I took my two D pieces over to the sewing machine. I put them right sides together, so cork sides together. It might be hard to see since it's black cork which has a black backing. 
and I went ahead and I stitched a quarter of an inch seam right down these two short ends. When I do my handles, I do have this selvage left on here from the cork. I don't bother to trim it until I'm done. Um, so I just take the two cleaner edges and sew them together. So in the pattern, I show you how to press your seam open. But what I've been doing lately, which I find I actually like a little bit better, is instead of pressing this open like so, I take my scissors and I cut in the center right up to but not through the stitching line. So I get as close as I can get. And then I take this over to the iron, or you can even do it with your fingers, and I press one seam going up and one seam going down. And what that does is when I take this and fold it in half for my next step, I can put a clip right there, it actually makes those seams go in opposite directions and it helps to lay them really flat and it also makes it a lot stronger because then when I top stitch, I'm going through all of those layers making a really strong handle. So I'm gonna take this over to my ironing board and then I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and do my top stitching. So when I fold this in half, just like that, I'm gonna to top stitch both long edges. Again, I'm doing an eighth and a quarter. This is an inch wide strap, so it is a lot of top stitching on there, but I really like how it looks. If you just wanna do one or the other, that is fine. I would suggest if you're not doing a double to just do an eighth of an inch from each edge, that would be my suggestion. I'm also going to take my F handle. This is gonna be for the two short handles, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So again, I'm gonna fold it in half and just top stitch both of those long edges. I'm gonna do an eighth and a quarter and I'll be back to show you how to add your hardware. I top stitched my F piece and trimmed it into two. I also top stitched my D handle, which this is my long uh, adjustable handle. I did an eighth and a quarter on both and I've gone ahead and trimmed off a piece for my tab. My F handles are just for the top. They don't require any hardware, so they're finished for now. I'm gonna set them aside. I'm going to add my slider to my long handle, and I'm going to add the rectangle ring to the short piece right here. So all I'm gonna do with this is just fold this over. And a couple of things to note, I did not change out my bobbin color, so I have a very distinct top and bottom. I have my variegated thread on the outside, the top part, and I have a beige on the back side. I don't wanna see the beige, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, cover that up. I also like to cover up the seam that's in the rectangle ring. It doesn't really matter, but I just feel like it's a little bit cleaner and neater. So I'm just gonna fold this piece over. I don't fold it completely in half. I don't want those edges touching because that's gonna add a lot of bulk for later. So I'm gonna fold it down about halfway, and I'll just add a clip here. This I'm gonna to take to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right along this edge here about an eighth of an inch. And then I'm also gonna come up and stitch as close to my rectangle ring as I can. It depends on what foot I'm using, but I'm usually about a half inch or so off. So I'm going to have that all ready to go. And now for my long handle, I'm gonna start down here on one end. Again, the piece that has, or the um, part that has the variegated, that's gonna be my front. So I'm gonna hold my piece right here, my slider, and run my handle up and over this bar, just like this. And I'll bring that down about an inch or so. Get that in place and add a clip. And I'm gonna do the same thing, stitch along this bottom edge and also stitch along this top edge right here as close as I can get to the bar. Having some wiggle room does not matter, so if I'm about a half inch off, that would be fine. Once those two pieces are, pieces are stitched, I'll show you how to put those together to make your adjustable handle. I added the rectangle ring to my tab. I've also added the slider to my long handle. One thing I just want to note, when it comes to bag making, there are certain things that are specific and need to be done uh, for a reason. When it comes to something like this, the tab, if your tab is a little bit shorter or if your piece on the back is down a little bit further, your seam, it doesn't really matter. That's one of those things that doesn't make a huge difference. I always give measurements in the patterns because I feel that it's my responsibility to do that. But this is one of those things that if it's off a little bit, if it's a little longer or shorter, it won't make any difference. Same thing with this. If I had pulled this piece down even further, it would be totally fine, it would not matter. So now that I have these ready, what I'm gonna do is I fold my handle and I make sure that it is not twisted anywhere. And I'm just gonna hold this together. I wanna make sure that I don't get a twist in this. I'm gonna take my tab and I'm just gonna loop it on to this end that doesn't have hardware and keep it loose. 
Then I'm gonna take this end and come up and back over that slider. And now I have my handle, it's complete. So this seam right here with the tab, that will get sewn into one side. And this seam over here will also get sewn into the other side. And my handle is totally adjustable. So for now, this piece is done and I am ready to move on to step seven. For step seven, I'm going to be adding my outside pocket that I just finished onto my B, which is my bag front. Okay, so this is my accent color cork. And this was my A that has fabric on the back and the accent on the front. So I want to add these pieces on top of each other, just like this for the bag. But one thing that I really wanna do is eliminate some bulk. I don't wanna to have too much bulk on the sides or up at the top where I'm going to be doing top stitching when I'm finished. I like to eliminate bulk wherever I can. And in a bag, anywhere that you can eliminate things that are not going to matter. Like back here, I'm going to take out some of the fabric. I'm gonna take out a little bit of this cork back here. The front will still stay the same, but any of that that will be in seams is going to be eliminated and it's just gonna make this a lot easier for the final steps. So what I'm gonna do first is grab some clips and just put this right along these edges here. All right, line this up. Sometimes things shift a little bit in cutting and sewing, so don't worry if your pieces are not 100% because there's a lot that we can cover up. So I'm just gonna clip that just like so. And now what I'm gonna do so that nothing moves is I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to clip away some of this pocket. When I'm done with this step, one of these pieces will be laying on top. So I know that I have two and a half inches right here where I can eliminate some of the bulk. I'm just gonna take out a little bit, about three quarters of an inch. So I'll just snip right here and snip right here. I'm not even measuring because I know that I have plenty of room to work with and that will still be covered up. So I'm gonna take out some bulk there and I'm also gonna come down to these corners and not my front, not my black and white polka dot, but these corners back here, I'm gonna take out about a half inch. Again, I'm not measuring this and this is not going to make any difference to the final parts of the bag. It's just gonna help me to eliminate some bulk and my little yellow corner sticking out there. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, just getting rid of the fabric and the backing cork so that it's not in my way later. Okay, get rid of those pieces. Now I've got my clips here. So now I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm not going to worry about stitching down right here. No one's gonna see that and it's not gonna be any you know, problem. I'm just gonna stitch around these edges about an eighth of an inch, just to keep this from shifting. Once I get that stitched in place, I'm going to take this piece right here, this is one of my C's, and I'm gonna place this on top. I'm just gonna pretend that I've already sewn this so I can show you how that looks. So I'm just gonna clip this up here, and just like that. And you can see that this piece is not trimmed, the edges hang off a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just stitch this right across here, do my top stitching. Once that's done, I'll go ahead and trim this, and then I can also stitch about an eighth of an inch just to make sure that that stays in place when I'm ready to do my finishing steps. So I'm gonna take this to the machine, I'm gonna do my edge stitching on here, and then I'm going to add this piece on. I did my trimming as I showed you earlier, and then I went ahead and stitched around my bag about an eighth of an inch just to base the edges together, it helps for the finishing step so that nothing shifts. So I took one of my C pieces and I just placed it right side up and I did not trim anything from back here. I just placed it on top, aligning these top edges and I did my top stitching. So I again did the eighth and the quarter. Now that that's done, I'm gonna turn this over and I'm just gonna trim these edges here just to line them up. So here's another little trick. This is not something that you're going to see in the pattern, but just another little trick for you because you know your sewing machines better than I do. I know how much bulk my sewing machine can handle and I know what it looks like when it's top stitching certain thicknesses. So now that I have this in place and I have it trimmed and I know where that top edge is, if I want to, I can actually go ahead and trim this back here too. Again, this is not something that's in the pattern but it's just a little extra bonus for you. So I'm just gonna trim off about a half inch or so. I'm gonna make sure that I remember that so I don't do any trimming on my black piece. I wouldn't wanna turn this over and then trim that off. I'm just gonna leave this like so, 
I'll put a couple of clips here to keep that down. Now I'm gonna take this over to my machine and since I did that trimming to eliminate bulk for later, I don't have to do any sewing up here. I'm just gonna do an eighth of an inch on each side to keep that piece nice and flat and then I'll be done with the front. If you don't reduce that, if you're using, let's say, a heavy duty machine like I have at home, um, it's a different machine than the one I'm using today. If I had not trimmed that piece off, I would also stitch an eighth inch along here as the pattern indicates. But because I eliminated some bulk, I'm just gonna do those edges and then I'll be ready to move on to the back and make my zippered pocket. I finished up the outside front. I did my trimming back here. Remember this little extra hack is just something that I've added to this video. It's not in the pattern, but it's just going to eliminate some of the bulk at the end where I top stitch. This edge right here is going to be the very top edge of my bag, so it will be top stitched. It will be the final step, and this just helps to make everything a little bit neater and easier on your machine. So this piece is done. I'm gonna set that aside. I went ahead and grabbed my other um, piece. This is my other A that was marked bag back. I added the other C. I also trimmed back here. I got rid of that cork. So again, I lined up my top edges here, added some clips, did my top stitching eighth and a quarter along this bottom edge. I trimmed my sides even and made them um, diagonal like the rest of the bag. And then I trimmed that little bit for the bulk and finished up an eighth of an inch on each side. So now for step nine, I'm gonna turn this piece over and I'm going to draw the lines as indicated in my pattern. So you're gonna to wanna to follow step nine. I found my center, I measured down from the top and this is my top edge, the top of the black right here because that's where I have trimmed, um, I'm not worried about where I trimmed this away from, so I measured from up here. I drew the box exactly as indicated in the pattern. I also have my pocket piece I, and I have my smaller zipper right here. So in order to add my zipper, first what I need to do is sew around this box with my fabric. I'm gonna set the zipper aside for just a minute, and I'm going to add this piece of fabric. This is gonna be inside the zippered pocket, so when I look at my finished bag right here, this is the part I'm working on. When I open up this pocket, this fabric right here is what's going to be um, the daisy print right there. So I've already done my marks. If you need a more in-depth tutorial for this step, you can watch an additional video on my YouTube channel, which will show you how to do this and the recess zipper closure. We will touch base on both of those in the pattern, but I do have a separate, very in-depth video on that. So what I need to do is place these two pieces right sides together. And here's a little trick that I do when I'm working with a directional fabric. I'm actually going to put my directional pocket fabric upside down. And the reason for that is when I sew this piece on here and I pull this pocket through to the back, I'm actually going to create a tube with that. And this will make sense as we get a little bit further in. But if I put this piece right side up, most of the piece that I see when I look into the pocket will be upside down. By placing it upside down now, it's actually going to be right side up. I know that's super confusing, I totally do, um, but I will show you when it's done and hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. So just trust the process. So I placed my pocket piece right side up, my print is facing downward, so my print is actually upside down. I'm placing my A cork piece right sides together and you can find the center of both pieces if you want and match them up, or what I do is just kind of eyeball that I have the same on both sides. It does not matter how much is sticking up on the top, so if you are perfectly even or down a little bit, it doesn't matter. Because I have cork, I really don't wanna pin this piece, so I'm just gonna add a couple of clips up here at the top. And actually what I'm gonna do Think this is going to make it a little bit easier for me is I'm going to scoot this all the way down like that and then I should be able to reach the bottom with some clips down there too. If I had fabric I would just be adding pins up here and pins down here but because this is cork I'm just going to use some clips and you can see there's my pocket fabric right here. I want to add these clips to keep this nice and flat because when I take this to the sewing machine, I'm gonna sew on this side, which means I can't see what's happening over here. And if this piece flips up and gets caught, it's going to create a mess. I'm gonna to have to get out my seam ripper and that never makes me happy. So I'm gonna keep this just like that, take this to my machine and I'm gonna sew on the outside of this box. 
ignoring the center line and the little triangles and ignoring any of the lines that extend too far out. So I'm just gonna stitch right around that box and I'll come right back and show you how to finish that up. I used my zipper foot and I stitched right around the outside of that box. I didn't stitch any of the rest of the lines. I'm still going to leave my clips or my pins in to keep my fabric flat. And I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm going to cut from this point to this point, right on that center line. I like to use my seam ripper to get started. I'm just gonna poke that through. I am going through the cork as well as the fabric. So I just wanna get that started so I have a little hole. And now I can get my scissors in there. And I'm just gonna cut. You can use your rotary cutter and your mat if you would prefer. And again, this does not have to be perfect. So if I'm not perfectly on my line or if it's not perfectly straight, it is not a big deal. Now I'm going to cut on these Vs. And what I wanna do is cut all the way back right into as close to the stitching line as I can. I don't wanna cut through my threads. So let me try to pull that close for you. So I wanna just get right in there and do the same thing here. I'm kind of ignoring where I drew and looking at where I sewed. So if my sewing is a little bit off from my marking, it's okay. I wanna just get my scissors right in there. So now that I have that done, I can take my clips off and I'm going to pull my pocket through to the back. So I'm gonna take this fabric and pull it all the way through and I'm gonna go over to the ironing board and press this as flat as I can get it. And what I wanna do is roll this up and I wanna be pressing right on that seam so that when I look from this side, I don't see any of the pocket fabric peeking through. I wanna just see the cork. So I'm gonna take this over, I'm gonna press it, and then I'll show you how to use the tape to get your zipper in place. I took my bag back over to the ironing board and I gave it a really good press. I made sure to pull this, but not bow it. You don't wanna to pull too hard that you end up getting a misshaped um, opening for your zipper but I went around a little bit at a time with my iron and I used my pressing clapper and that's how I got such a flat uh, seam. When it comes to cork, you can iron on it. Again, I've mentioned that before, but sometimes ironing on it doesn't really do as much as you would want it to. So I ironed on the backside to make sure that I kept this nice and neat. And as I would iron a spot, I would take my pressing clapper and hold it over the top. Iron a little bit more and keep going. And then I gave it one final press and I used my pressing clapper and I let it sit and cool. That's what's keeping everything nice and flat. I have my clips back in place so that I'm ready to sew, but let's take a look at the other side. So this is the outside of the bag. And you can see here, there is a tiny little lip of fabric that's peeking out. The reason for that is again, because the cork is a little bit heavier and harder to press. And I could sit here and really fuss with it if I wanted to, but I don't mind that. I do not mind when this happens as long as it's even. And I can see that I have maybe a 16th of an inch all the way around. To me, it looks like piping and it totally does not bother me. If that bothers you, you're gonna wanna work a little bit more to really roll that seam down. If you have any problems in your corners, getting them nice and straight, take your scissors, and get right back in here and give that a little bit more of a trim right in that corner. Even if it's one thread, it might seem like a minor difference, but it will help to open this up. And I can tell because I don't have puckers and wrinkles here that I'm fine. If this right here does not want to flatten out and it just will not lay flat, usually it's because you didn't trim close enough to your corners. So now that this is ready, let's talk about tape. Normally, when I'm doing a zippered pocket, if it's on fabric, if this piece right here is fabric, I would be using this tape. This is a quarter inch wide fusible tape. So it's a little bit thinner, the paper is a little bit thinner, and I would be putting that right along here on these edges, fusing that down, and then turning my piece over and fusing it to my zipper. But here's the issue with that. When I turn this piece over and I put my iron here to fuse this down, the cork is thick and I can't get enough heat through to melt that and to make that fusible stick to my zipper. So it kind of becomes uh, unnecessary. So what I'm doing instead, because this piece is cork, is I'm going to use this non-fusible tape. So it's the same principle, except I don't need an iron for this. So I'm just going to cut a few pieces off and this is optional. If you don't have this tape or if you don't want to use this, you could use a glue stick or you can try using pins and clips. 
I just find that I want my zipper to stay as straight as possible and using tape has helped me do that over the years. So I'm gonna take this and put it on the fabric as close to the edge as I can get it. And it doesn't matter if it extends beyond, that's totally fine. This is non-fusible, so I'm just pressing it firmly with my fingers. Sometimes I'll take the edge of my scissors and just kind of really push that down so that when I take the paper off, I'm not pulling the tape off as well. So just like that. So again, if this was fabric, cotton fabric, this would be a fusible tape and I would be ironing it down. This is a non-fusible. So now that I have that where I want it, I can peel off the paper and I can, maybe, there we go, and I can add my zipper. So adding the zipper from the back side is not going to help you get it straight. You want to add your zipper with this turned over. So what I do, if I'm at the ironing board, this zipper is sitting on my ironing board so I can iron the tape down. Since I'm using non-fusible, I'm just leaving my zipper um, right here on my table. My zipper is closed at this end because my pull went on nice and straight. If yours isn't and your zipper is open on that end, that's totally fine. It does not make any difference. So I'm going to place my zipper here. I leave my zipper pull right in the center. And I'm going to turn this over and line this up just like that. And what I like to do is put my hand here and reach, other, reach under with my other hand and just kind of pull and straighten this and just kind of work my way down. I'm just pressing that tape in place. If it was fusible tape, my hand would be the iron. So I'm just pushing that down. And when I lift that up, it's not going anywhere. So now my zipper is not gonna shift. Trying to use pins and pin through or pin down or use clips gets kind of messy. And personally, I can't do it well. If you can do it well, you are much better than I am because I cannot. So I'm gonna take this to my machine and I'm gonna stitch around the box. I'm going a 16th to an eighth of an inch. I have my zipper foot on, so I'm gonna be using my zipper foot to do this. So when I have this at my machine, my zipper foot will be sitting right here and I'll go all the way around, just once. If I was using a different foot, let's say a quarter of an inch foot, and the foot happened to be sitting on the zipper, that's fine. But what's gonna happen is this pull will get in your way. And because this tape is not permanent, what I do in that case is I start down here, away from the metal part. I stitch, 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 get to here, and then I will unzip a little bit and get that out of my way and finish my sewing. I try to pull on the zipper as little as possible because I don't wanna shift the tape. So I'm gonna take this to my machine, I'm gonna stitch about an eighth to a sixteenth all the way around, and I'll come back and show you how to finish up your pocket. I stitched around my zipper. I used my zipper foot and went about an, an eighth of an inch or so around. I just went around once. So now that that's done, I'm gonna turn my piece back over and I'm gonna trim off the excess zipper. I just don't want this in the seam allowance of the fabric. I am using a, <clears throat> excuse me, nylon zipper. So I was able to sew right over it with no issues. So now that that's done, it's time to close up the pocket itself. Now, whenever you're sewing a zippered pocket, this is going to stay loose. This is not going to be sewn to this piece at all. That's why when you look at the finished bag, you don't see any stitching here. This pocket is totally loose. I can reach inside and pull it out if I need to. So we wanna make sure that that is two things, hanging towards the bottom of the bag and also not attached to the back. So let me show you how to finish that. And then I will come back and show you when it's finished how this is actually not going to be upside down when it's done. So what I do is I take my two edges, my top and bottom, bring those together, just like this. And I'm gonna sew right across the bottom edge first, a quarter of an inch. Again, this is not attached to here. After I've gotten done sewing this, we'll pretend that I've already stitched that, I'm gonna pull this down. I want this hanging down towards the bottom of the bag. If you pull it up, you're going to have this very weird kind of smile. You'll get like a curved part right here and you don't want that. You want this hanging down where it would naturally sit in the bag. And then I'm going to stitch these sides. So I just take this, push this out of the way, stitch a quarter of an inch, do the same thing over here, and my pocket is finished. So let me go stitch this and I'll show you how it looks. My pocket is all stitched. Again, I sewed the bottom and top edges together first. I pulled it down so it would hang towards the bottom of the bag and I stitched my sides. 
it is not attached to the back. It is completely loose. I just did a quarter of an inch seam and I didn't press anything. So this seam was not pressed. I just used my fingers to press it down towards the bottom. I don't find that it makes any difference, but if you want to stitch it and then press it before you do the sides, that's totally fine. So now when I turn this over and open this up, you can see that my daisies are right side up. On the back part, back here, they are upside down, but who's going to see that? This is the part that more people would see is that. So when I look in, my daisies are actually upright and they almost, <laughs> they almost stitch perfectly. That's a weird little coincidence. My seam, which is right there, it actually makes a full flower. So that's funny. Um, <laughs> so anyway, now my bag is done, or my back is done, it, my bag's not done. And these are as upright as they're going to be with this technique, I'm totally happy. Step 10 is going to be finishing up the outside of my bag so I can move on to my lining. So I have here my front and my back. I've gone ahead and made a very small chalk mark at the top of both in the center, and I also measured out as the pattern indicates. So I'm going to grab my handles here and a few clips, and I'm gonna end up, and I'm going to clip these in place. So what I do is the measurement that is listed in your pattern is the inside measurement. You always measure on the inside of your handles. So I'm just placing the edges on the marks that I made and you can see they kind of want to move around so I'll use a couple of clips just to get these to the sewing machine like this. I'm just aligning my raw edges and making sure that my handle is not twisted. So I want to make sure that I don't have a twist in my handle. These little short handles are optional. If you don't want to add them on, that's fine. I just thought it was a fun little accent for the bag. So if that's not your thing, you can skip those and just move on to step 11 and start working on your lining. So I'm gonna do the same thing for both of these. And I also have here my handmade tag. I'm going to add that on as well. I think it's a great time to add it. A handmade tag is optional, of course but I like to wait until I have the outside of my bag almost done, and then I know exactly where I wanna put it. Sometimes it's hard to do as you're working, so I like to wait until I have all of my pieces here so that I can see where I wanna put it. Do I want it up at the top, down here, off to the side? Where would I like to put this? So I'm gonna put it up here um, the same way I did on the one in the pattern. So I'm just gonna grab my uh, pencil here, my chalk, and just kind of making sure I know where the center is. So I'm gonna place my washer in the center. I'm sitting it right above my top stitching line and I'm marking the second notch in because I know that that's where it needs to be. So I'll just double check that. And now I'm going to use my seam ripper and I'm actually gonna move this handle out of the way. I'll clip it again when I'm done. And I'm just going to use my seam ripper. There we go. Okay, put my handmade tag through here, make sure it's even. And then I'll add the washer onto the back and fold those prongs over. I just went through the top part, the black. I didn't go through the yellow. It doesn't really matter if you do, but I just went through the single layer. So now that that's in there, I can put my handle back on. And now I'm ready to take those to the sewing machine. I'm just gonna take the front and the back over and I'm going to stitch a couple of times across the top edge of both of my handles within the seam allowance. So less than a quarter, a couple of times just to hold those in place. My short handles are stitched in place. I found my center and spaced them out as per the pattern. I just stitched them within the seam allowance a few times back and forth across both. I did that for the front as well as the back. And I have my handmade tag on. All of my pieces for the outside are good to go. So I'm gonna set those aside and start working on step 11, which is So let's work on our divided pockets. These are the H pieces. So you have two pieces that are exactly the same, two rectangles. And what you're gonna do is take them to your sewing machine, fold them in half, just like this. So you'll have a nice long tube. You're going to sew a quarter of an inch right along these raw edges here. 
not the short sides. Those are gonna stay open. You'll turn uh, the pocket right side out uh, through those afterwards. So when you do your stitching, make sure that you back stitch, and then you're gonna take it to your ironing board and press your seam open. So I've already gone ahead and done one of these just to show you how it looks. So I stitched my seam quarter of an inch and I pressed my seam open. I like to do this to eliminate some of the bulk. So now that that's done, I can take this back to the ironing board, turn it right side out, just like this, and give this one good final press. So when it comes to this seam, I want this to be down towards the bottom, but I don't care if it's right at the bottom. If my sewing was a little bit uneven or if my um, seam is not pressed flat, I don't want that to be in my way later. So what I'll do is I'll press it up a little bit from the bottom. This will be the back of the pocket. This is going to be sitting on the lining so no one will see this. And you'll notice that my print is upside down. You can do this technique with a directional print. So I make sure that the front looks how I want it. I'll give this a good press and then I'm gonna top stitch right across here, my top edge only. So I'm gonna do the same thing on both of my pockets and then I'll be ready to go on to step 12 and add them into my purse. Both of my pockets are done. I went ahead and pressed them and top stitched them. You can see here is my seam. This one went pretty far up into the middle because I was um, adjusting the front so that it looked how I wanted it. I wanted to get as many of the flowers as I could in there. So this seam really does not matter. It just has to be on the back. If you want it on the very bottom, you can. I don't personally like it there. I like to move it up. So whether it's a half inch from the bottom or in the middle like mine is, it won't make any difference. So I gave it a good press, rolled that seam up, made sure my front looked nice, and I top stitch right along the top edge. I did a quarter of an inch. Again, you can do an eighth, a quarter, a double, whatever you like. And then what you're going to do is take your lining piece. So you have two pockets and two lining pieces. You're going to place it just like this so that seam is towards the back. You're going to use the measurements in the pattern for your placement. And I like to use my ruler to keep it nice and straight. I've already gone ahead and pinned this one. So I'm just going to add some pins to make sure my pocket stays straight so I can sew it. I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm first just gonna sew across the bottom. Now, because the lining piece has interfacing and the pocket doesn't, this may shift. It might bubble a little bit or move as I'm sewing and that's fine. That's why I like to kind of do this in, in steps. If I do this part first, take it to the ironing board, press it if I need to, and then trim the sides even with the lining, it's a lot better. If I do that now and something shifts, I'm just gonna have to trim it again. So I sew the bottom, trim the sides, and then divide it however I like. I sew on the sides within the seam allowance, so about an eighth of an inch, and then you can divide it however you like. Because I use these as samples and they're not actual functional bags, I don't worry about the placement and how many pockets I have. You can take your time, measure out your cell phone or different items that you want to carry and do it however you would like. I just mark the center and sew there. I like to start at the bottom, so up to the top, turn and come back down. That way all of my threads are down towards the bottom of the pocket and I've stitched it twice so it's nice and sturdy. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with both of these and then I'll be done. So I took my lining pieces over to the machine and I did my sewing. Again, I placed my pocket down from the top as per the instructions in the pattern. I used my ruler to make sure that everything stayed nice and straight. I stitched across the bottom first. I did a quarter of an inch. You could do a quarter or an eighth. It really does not make a difference. And I stitch across the bottom first just because this pocket piece may shift. This has interfacing and this does not, and we just wanna make sure that there's no shifting. And if there is, it's much easier to fix that before doing the sides. So once I have the bottom sewn in, I trim my sides even with the lining piece. I sew those uh, within the seam allowance, about an eighth of an inch. And the reason I sew those is because when we're finishing the bag, we don't want this pocket to flip down and not get caught or to get stitched incorrectly. So that little bit of stitching in the seam allowance helps to keep that nice and flat and then I divided it. Again, divide it however you like, I just divided it down the center. So I started at the bottom, worked my way to the top, turned and came back down, and I made sure to back stitch when I started and stopped. So both of my lining pieces look the same now. I did the same treatment to both of those. So the next thing I'm going to do is prepare my darts. So I'm just gonna grab a few clips here, and I'm going to do this to both lining pieces and both outside pieces. And what I'm doing is taking this triangle that's down on the bottom corners and giving it some dimension. So I'm folding my pieces right sides together, just like this. 
fold that and add a clip and do the same thing over here. And by doing that, I'm giving the bag some dimension. You can see here in the finished bag oops, that it has those corners all finished. So I'm gonna take all four pieces, my two linings and my two outsides to the machine and sew a quarter of an inch. When I'm sewing and I sew across here, I am gonna be sewing past the top of the point. I'll show you how that looks when it's done, but don't be concerned, you are sewing a quarter of an inch from where you cut. So I went ahead and stitched the darts. I repeated the same process with both linings and both outsides. So all of my pieces now have this rounded shape at the bottom. Let's take a look up close. Let me trim some of my threads here. So when you look at your dart, right here is that cut portion from the template. And I sewed a quarter of an inch, making sure to backstitch. And my stitching does go beyond. So there's where the top of the triangle was, and there's where my stitching is. And that is perfectly fine. That's how we want it to look. So all four of your pieces should be all set. And again, now my bag has some dimension. Unfortunately, with this style, it doesn't want to stand up on its own when it's empty, but it makes sure that the bag is not completely flat and that's what we want. So now we're ready to go on to our next step. Step 14 is preparing the recessed zippered top. I have my pieces here that I'll go over with you. And since my Fiona did not have a zipper in it, I thought I would show you this one on a different bag. So this is the piece that we're making right here. So you have your zipper, you have fabric on the top, and you have fabric on the bottom as well. So the recessed zipper closure has four strips of fabric and a zipper. So what we're gonna do first is you're gonna take these strips right here, and these are your J pieces. And you're going to do the same thing to each of them, but I have them in steps for you here. I don't wanna rush through this step, but I do have a complete video that will show you step-by-step -step with a bunch of tips on this as well, also on my YouTube channel. So I'm just going to kind of walk you um, quickly through this and the steps are also in the pattern. And again, that's a great video if any of this doesn't make sense, or if you want to just watch that separately, it's really great to add this to any bag. So you have your four strips here and you're going to start on the wrong side. So if you are using a batik or a linen or anything that doesn't have a clear wrong and right side, be very careful and make sure that you are not putting your uh, tape on the wrong side. I am using fusible tape. I'm not sure if it's gonna show up well for you on camera, um, but this is the quarter inch wide fusible. I like to use the fusible tape because this step works best with an iron so you get really crisp edges. If you're using the non-fusible, you might not get as crisp of an edge as you would like. So what I've done, and again, I'm doing the same exact thing on all four pieces. First, I'm adding tape onto my short ends on my wrong side. And I'm just fusing those down. They're butted right up against the, end, the edges of the short sides. Once I have those fused down, I'm gonna leave the paper on and I'm going to fold my edge over. If I use the paper, it's going to make a nice crisp edge. And then I can take my paper out and I can fuse my edges down. So this one I've already pressed. I just have to take the paper out and then I can fuse these edges down. On all four of my pieces, I want both of my short ends fused down. Those are the nice clean ends that are going to be out here, right here on this part of the zipper. So we wanna make sure that these are finished as well. You don't want any raw edges of your fabric showing. After you do your short ends, you're going to turn your pieces over so they are right side up. So first we worked on the wrong side, now we wanna work on the right side. On the back here, you'll see that these edges are fused down, they're not coming up. So on the right side of all of my pieces, I'm going to put a piece of tape along one of the long edges, just one. After I fuse this on, again, leaving my paper in place, I'm going to fold this back towards the wrong side and give it a good press. So this is how all of my pieces will look when I'm ready to add them to my zipper. I have my ends fused down, I have a piece of tape on here, and I can just go ahead and peel the paper off when I'm ready to use that. And what I'm going to do before I add that on is take my zipper to the sewing machine and I've turned my edges, just kind of uh, turn them so they're like an L shape. You want your zipper teeth to go away from the zipper pull because you don't want your zipper pull to come off when you do your finishing steps. When you look at the zipper right here, you can see that those curved ends are sewn into the fabric. So I have fabric on the top and the bottom on each side. If I didn't do this curve, my zipper pull could come off and I don't want that. Because the zipper tape does not have any stoppers on it, we have to do this technique. 
So you're just gonna take your zipper ends, you're gonna fold them outwards and just put a few stitches in. It doesn't matter how neat it is because this will get covered with fabric. So I just have a little tuck right here on each side and I have that all ready to go. I know you can't see my stitches because my thread matches really well on this zipper, but I just took a few stitches in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna finish up preparing these pieces and then I'll show you how to add them onto your zipper. My pieces are all prepared and my zipper is ready to go. So how do I add these on to this zipper? Well, first thing I'm going to do is take my paper off. And if you have any problems getting the paper off, if it's ripping or just doesn't wanna come off, go back to your ironing board. Sometimes it's not completely fused or sometimes if you've let them sit for too long, they cool off and they don't wanna come off of the fabric. So every so often I will get some that wants to rip just warm it up again and you should be just fine. And somehow I lucked out and they all came off. Okay, so we're gonna take two pieces for the top and two for the bottom. And here's a very common mistake that I see people do with this technique. They place this down here. If I do that and I don't cover up this end of the zipper, my zipper pull is going to fall off and this looks really unfinished. So I don't want that. You want to take your piece and place it over that bit right there, that little part that you sewed, you don't wanna see any of your stitches. The other thing that I see people do quite a bit is they take their fabric and they put it real close to their zipper like this. And what happens when you do that is your zipper pull gets caught. You have to make sure that you have enough clearance for your zipper pull. And remember, the pull is a little bit wider than the teeth. So what I do is I kind of go to the middle point. I'm My zipper tape, I'm kind of like halfway from the edge that way I know that I have room. And when I take this to my ironing board and I press this down, if I cannot move this easily, I will just rip these back off and press them again. So I'm going to press two on the front and then I'm gonna turn the entire piece over and press the other two on the back. I fused my fabric pieces to the front and the back. I have two on the front side and two on the back side. I do my front pieces first, make sure that I have covered up the ends of my zipper down here. Once I get those on and I align those on these ends, when I turn this over to the back, it's much easier to put these pieces on because I have reference points of where to line those up. I'm not done yet, I still have to do some sewing, but you might be wondering what happens down on this end. Why is it so much longer and what do I do about this end because it doesn't have a stopper on it? Well, while I'm sewing, I will add a little clip just to make sure that my zipper pull doesn't come off because I find it much easier to sew with it open. When I am done, I will add a tab. I will either add one out of fabric or a scrap of cork. That's also included in your pattern and I'll show you how to do that. So I will be finishing this end, but why does it need to be so much larger? The reason is with this style of zipper, when you look at this one right here, if I stopped this zipper right here, it wouldn't work very well in my finishing steps. It would make it too hard for the bag to function and my bag would only open that far. So because I have this longer end, when I open it up, I can open my bag all the way. So that is how the recess zipper is going to look when it's finished. You're going to have that little loose end and I just tuck it right back into my bag. I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew around each side. You do not want to be sewing across your zipper. If you do that, it's going to prevent your zipper pull from working because you will have thread across there. So you're going to treat both of these sides um, separately. So what I do is I use my blind hem foot so I can do an eighth of an inch stitch and I just go around the box here and around the box here. These raw edges are going to be in a seam later but if I sew them to keep them together it will help with the finishing steps and it'll look a lot neater. So you don't want to do a quarter of an inch you want to do about an eighth of an inch and again go around this box and around this one. Don't stitch across your zipper it will make it not function. I stitched around both sides of my recessed zipper, so I've stitched them separately. My zipper still works. I don't have any thread crossing over it. I stitched about an eighth of an inch and went around each side. When I do this, I usually start on this side, which is the raw edge since it's going to be hidden later. Then if I get any little bird's nest or have any loose threads, they'll be in a seam. I go around, over, back, and then meet up where I started, and I do the same thing on this side. So before I can finish up and uh, complete my bag, I do wanna add a little scrap of cork for a tab so I don't have to worry about losing my pull. So in the pattern, it's going to show you how to do this out of cork as well as fabric. 
since I have cork for my entire bag, I had a bunch of leftover scraps. So I just cut a piece here. And all I do is cut it the width of my zipper, which my zipper is about an inch and a quarter by about two inches. I find that that works really well. And I just fold it over the end, just like that. Since it's cork, I don't have to worry about these raw edges and I can stitch this in place. But here's a little cheater hack that I've been doing a lot lately. Sometimes my stitching doesn't look great when I try to sew around here. I'm not a fan of putting an X on the end. I know it's strong, but I don't always love how it looks. So how do I get this on here without having to worry about my stitching? I use my Guterman glue. So this tab is really just to finish the zipper end and prevent my pull from coming off. So I'm just gonna kind of put some glue. I don't go too crazy, just enough to hold it, just like that. I don't get right up close to the edge because it is going to um, kind of smush out when I put it on the zipper. So I just take it like this and fold it in half. And I can either set this um, on my ironing board and put my clapper on top of it for a little bit or add a couple of clips here. That will dry and now my zipper end is completely finished. For step 15, it's time to assemble our lining with the recessed zipper. So the part that we just made in step 14, your recessed zipper, you're going to need that as well as your lining pieces. And we're just gonna start with half. So when it comes to a zippered closure, we typically think of a zippered closure as the outside of the bag. It's something that would be on the outside. A recessed zipper, however, is actually part of the lining. That's why this is made from my lining fabric and that's where it's going to sit when it's complete. On this bag right here, you can see this is my outside fabric and there is my lining right there. That is actually where the recess zipper is going. So in order to do this, the first thing you're going to do is take your lining to your cutting mat and you're gonna trim from the top. This is not getting thrown out. Do not throw away this strip. As per the pattern, you're going to trim with your ruler from both of your um, lining pieces. So I have a strip here, I have the main part of my lining and I have my recess zipper. This is going to be referred to as the short strip. This is going to be the bottom piece, oops, sorry, and the recess zipper. So the first thing we're going to do, grab some clips. If you want to find the centers on all of these pieces, by all means do, I just kind of eyeball everything. So I want you to just always repeat up, up, down. So we're gonna start with our bottom piece, up. Then we're gonna take our recess zipper, also up. Again, find your centers if you want to. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it, add a clip. And now we're gonna take this piece down. So right side down. So right side up, right side up, right side down. Just add some clips. Take this to the sewing machine and stitch all the way across this top edge, a quarter of an inch, making sure that you backstitch. You're going to be catching the bottom piece the fabric on one side of your zipper and also your short piece. Lining side one is complete. I have stitched the bottom to the zipper to the short piece. I stitched a quarter of an inch. I did take this over and press it. Most of the time I don't because I'm lazy. So if you don't press this, it's fine. And if you see right here, I'm a little bit short on this end. That's also fine. We can cover that up when we finish the bag. So don't worry about that. So now what you're gonna do is repeat this process with the other half of the zipper and the other half of your lining. So once again, I'm going to place my lining up. I'm going to take the other side of my zipper up, right side up, right side up, making sure that I am even. Again, find your centers if you would like. This is the short piece down, right side up, right side up, right side down. At this point, you are still believing me and trusting the process. When we get done with this is usually when people will have a little bit of a panic because it will look wrong and I'll show you why it looks wrong and assure you that it is right. So as long as you're following along with me, you're doing fine. So here's my half that I already sewed. Here's my second half. I'm gonna stitch a quarter of an inch all the way across, making sure to backstitch. Side number two is all stitched. Again, quarter of an inch and I did press it up. If you don't wanna press, that's fine. Or if you wanna press it down so your seams nest together, that's okay as well. Got a couple of threads here. So this is the point that most people will start to panic and assume that they have done something wrong. Even after watching a video, I still get emails about this. When you open this piece up, your zipper is upside down. 
There's a reason for that. We don't need to see the right side of the zipper from inside of the bag. If we were inside the bag looking up, we would see the bottom side of this. When this lining is complete, it sits in your bag like this. You just see the short ends and we see the right side of the zipper. So even if you are on full panic right now, as long as it looks like this, it will be right in the end. So don't worry, try not to stress. I am telling you to trust the process. When I look at it like this and I see the interfacing side, I see the right side of my zipper. That is correct, okay? So what we're gonna do next is finish up the sides and leave an opening for turning. So we're gonna take these pieces and these little strips are very important. Do not push them down. You don't wanna push them down because that's not going to finish your bag properly. What you want is for your fabric to be right sides together, including those little strips. So I'm putting them right sides together. I'm lining up my seams. And even though I pushed one of my seams up, or both of them up, I'm pushing one down with my fingers right now. And you can see right here, I'm off a little tiny bit. I'm not worried about it. It will be in the seam allowance, so that's totally fine. I'm gonna go down the side and add some clips. When I get down to the darts, I didn't press those, so I'm just going to nest them together, one to the left and one to the right. And I'm just gonna keep on going. Do the same thing here, clip my threads. I'm usually better about that, but I missed a few. Nesting my seams together on this dart, making sure that this is nice and smooth here. And I'm also trying to align the bottom edges of my divided pockets. Things shift, it's not a big deal if everything does not match up. I'm more concerned with the bag itself if the darts are off a little bit or if this is off, it's the lining, it's not anything to be worried about. This little zipper tail right here should not be sticking out. I wanna tuck that into my bag. That's really important. If you sew through that zipper, it's going to make the rest of this a little bit difficult. And again, this edge right here was a little short. I'm just gonna push that down with my fingers, line up those seams, and I'm good to go. I am not sewing the top. I don't wanna sew the top of my bag, that's already complete. I just wanna sew the sides and I stitch past the darts and I leave a really big opening in the bottom. I have to turn an entire cork bag through this opening, so I don't want a little tiny opening, I want a big opening that I can fit my entire hand into. So I stitch probably to about an inch past the darts and I leave all of this open. I'll be right back to show you how that looks. I stitched around the outside, I stitched past the darts, and I left a really big opening down at the bottom. Um, here's a little trick for you that I do sometimes. Uh, I don't try to stress too much about this down here where I'm going to turn the bag. When I'm done and I stitch this closed, it's gonna be all the way in the bottom of the bag, so to me, it's not a big deal. But if it's a big deal to you and you wanna make sure that this comes out really neat, what I will do is stitch right across here with a really big stitch length, like as big as I can go so I'm basting it, then when I'm done, I can take those stitches out and it perforates the edge, which will make closing it a little bit easier. Again, this is not one of those places that I stress, but if it bothers you, you can absolutely do that. So I'm just gonna trim my threads. Let's take a look one more time before we do the outside. So when I'm looking at my lining, there's my zipper pull, and I'm looking down into my lining, and that's exactly how I want it to look in my bag. I did not catch the end of my zipper, really important, you don't wanna do that. And I didn't catch anything down here on the end and my little pieces of fabric, my strips are standing upright. They are not sewn down. So this is complete. Now it's time to do the same thing with our outside pieces. And all you're gonna do with these, the same process, you're gonna turn them right sides together. There's no zipper for this, you just have your handles that will kind of push a little bit, but that's okay. What I like to do, because my outside matters a little bit more to me, I wanna make sure that everything is as perfect as I can get it on the outside. I will clip, and I'm even gonna clip the top even though I'm not sewing it. I'm gonna line up these edges on my accent pieces. And line up over here. Those are really important to me, so I really wanna line those up well. And then I'm gonna skip the rest and come down to my darts. Again, turning them in opposite directions and adding a clip and then adding a clip here. 
And once I get all of those key points clipped together, then I'll go ahead and add clips to the rest of it. The accent is only on the front, so I don't have to align that with anything on the back. My pieces are all lining up really well. And I'm gonna take this to the machine and do the same thing, except I don't need an opening on this one. The outside gets completely sewn. So I am not leaving an opening. I'm just going to start at one side, make sure I back stitch quarter of an inch all the way around to the top. I stitched all the way around the outside of my bag with a quarter of an inch seam. I made sure to back stitch and when I started and stopped, this time I did not leave an opening. We don't need that in the outside, just the lining. And I'm just checking all of my seams. Everything lined up really nicely. Oftentimes I will stitch that um, seam twice just because it is the main seam of the bag and I wanna make sure that everything is nice and tight. So I'm not going to do any pressing right now. My seams and the bottom down here definitely need to be pressed, but since I'm going to be adding the lining um, and the straps and then I'm going to be turning again, I'm just gonna wait and press everything all at once. Before I can finish up and add my lining, I need to stitch on the long handle that we made earlier. So I'm just going to make this nice and long. I'm going to take each end, I have the end with the uh, tab here and I'm gonna sew that right on the seam, so I'm just kind of centering it over this side seam. I make sure that I don't twist it. Come around to this other edge, add that on to this side seam. And just like I did with the top handles, I'm just gonna stitch back and forth within the seam allowance a few times to anchor that in place. I stitched my handle in place within the seam allowance, making sure that I didn't uh, twist it when I was going. So now that that's ready, it's time to complete the bag. So I'm going to take my outside and place it inside of the lining. I did not turn my lining right side out because I want these to be right sides together. So I'm gonna open my zipper all the way and I'm tucking the zipper down in. I wanna make sure that when I'm stitching, I'm not catching this recessed zipper. So I wanna push that down and I like to have the zipper when it's closed on the left. So I'm going to do it just like this. So my little end is over here. And my front, oops, it's gonna go inside. Sorry, I think I just boinked the camera. Did not mean to. So I'm placing this inside. I'm making sure to tuck my handles down, including this long handle. And I just reach in through the opening in the lining and just kind of pull that down. The only thing that I want touching at this point is the short side of my lining and the very top edge of my bag. So I'm lining up the side seams. My handle is right there, my adjustable handle. So I'm gonna line that up first. I'm gonna come over to this side. And remember, your pieces are the same size, so this gets kind of awkward and it feels like they don't fit together. Just be patient and take your time with this. They do fit together. And then I'm just gonna work around a little bit at a time making sure that everything is tucked down. No zippers, no handles, nothing should be standing up here. My zipper should be pushed way down out of the way. At this point, if it feels like your pieces don't go together, just a little bit, if you have just a little bit of, of um, space and it just feels like they're not going together, that's normal, that can be adjusted. Let's say that I get this all clipped and I have this big gap that's when you need to take them apart and check your measurements to see if something was possibly cut wrong or stitched incorrectly. There shouldn't be a huge gap. Small gaps are normal. This one actually went together really well. Um, usually on camera, I always have a problem, so I'm actually very happy about that. But if I have little tiny gaps, I can kind of space them out. If I find that my outside or my lining, one of them is drastically larger than the other, I have probably done something wrong. I probably cut something wrong, but it's okay. If you take them apart and check your measurements, you could always go back in and adjust, you know, fix your seams or trim down anywhere that you need to. So if you haven't already, make sure you take the table off of your sewing machine. It's gonna be much easier to sew around this opening when you put it right on the free arm of your machine if you have one. If you don't, you can just kind of, you know, push the other side out of the way and stitch like that. I do have a table on mine, so I'm just gonna pop it off. I'm gonna stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around here and then I'll be ready to turn it right sides out. 
give it a final press, close my lining and top stitch. I stitched around the top of my bag. I did go around twice. The reason is the clips are helpful, but they can also be a hindrance sometimes and they will get in the way because I have to keep stopping and taking them off and sometimes they'll get caught on my machine. So sometimes my stitching on the first pass isn't great, so I'll do it twice. So I stitched around twice. I'm gonna turn this right side out through the opening in my lining and then I'm gonna take it to the ironing board and give it a good press. I turned my bag right side out through the lining. I checked everything, all of my seams look good. I caught everything I needed to. My handles are in place. My zipper did not get caught. Um, I went ahead and pressed the outside because it definitely needed it. So when it comes to cork seams like this, what I do is I roll them together so they're nice and flat, iron it, and then put my pressing clapper on top. I find that that helps to really get them smooth. Now that that's done, I have two more things to do. I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and close up the lining. So all I do, and you can do this by hand if you want, I would just much rather do it on the machine, is just tuck those edges in. So you hide those raw edges, just like that. And then I stitch nice and close, about an eighth of an inch just to close that. So just keep tucking. And then the last thing I'm going to do once that's done is tuck this down inside my bag like this so i'm tucking the lining in my zipper is down my handles are up if i need to press this i can but a lot of times i'll just kind of work around with my fingers and add some clips and i'm going to top stitch right around this top edge i haven't decided yet if i want to do an eighth or a quarter or both, but I'll decide when I get to the machine. So I'm just gonna top stitch right around there. The handles should be standing up, the zipper should be down, and I'm just catching the top of my lining and the top of my bag. I'm all done and I'm so happy. I love how this bag came out. I have uh, my variegated thread showing on the correct side, except on my short handles. I did make a mistake, so I will point that out for you, so hopefully you don't. This is why I don't usually use um, a different top and bobbin thread. So I have my beige thread actually showing because when I put my handles on, I didn't put the variegated thread right side down, but that's okay. I'm not gonna take it apart and fix it. I can live with it. Um, I went ahead and just checked everything. It all looks good. As far as top stitching, I didn't have any issues. The thicker parts of my bag are gonna be right in the seams where my handles meet and where all of my seams come together on the side. I didn't have any issues because I eliminated as much bulk as I could as I was making my bag. So no broken needles, no uh, skip stitches, everything came out great. The only thing that I would probably have done differently if I was taking my time and thinking is I would have finished my handles. You can see I have a little bit of um, fraying right here and it's not the cork, it's actually the backing fabric. So I'll just trim those away, it'll be fine. Again, this is for a sample, so I'm not super concerned. If I was giving this away, I would have finished those. So if you are going to use Edge Coat or Fabric Fusion to finish your handles, you'll wanna do that before you add your hardware and before you add them to the bag. I did not, and that's okay. When I look down here, there is my zipper. Isn't she beautiful? I love that metallic rainbow zipper. I can open it up and see all of my pretty flowers inside of the bag. Everything's right side up because I took my time in planning. My zipper is correct. So even though at some points it might've looked wrong, it is correct. And the recess zipper is not closed on the ends, but it does close up your bag really well. I've not had any issues with anything falling out. This zipper is so pretty, I kind of want to leave it hanging out, but you can tuck your end right in and just leave it like that. And now my bag is all set, so I'm ready to use it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see how your Fiona handbags come out.